what's up everybody it's Keely Monster and I'm back and uh, this is actually something I just wanted to do kind of like as an advisory video um, what I'm actually working on right now is uh, the Vindicator which is kind of like a variant of the Space Marine Rhino from the Warhammer 40,000 series now the cool thing about Warhammer 40,000 oh, hang on the uh, siege shield right here um, the cool thing about uh, the Warhammer 40,000 is that the siege are the siege and artillery pieces that they have uh, can actually be recreated within Kerbal Space Program and I did that with my Bombard, but that was kind of a cheat. Uh, I basically just kind of used an empty shell, and I used the Davy Crockett in order to kind of provide the explosive payload. Now, um, what I was wanting to do um, as kind of maybe a little bit better um, approximation of an artillery piece was make one that actually utilized a, a conventional explosive warhead. You know, something that doesn't have a ridiculous uh, blast yield. And uh, what I settled on was the small high explosive warhead and using a combination of structural fuselage uh, and sepatrons, which you'll actually see highlighted right there, uh, to basically make a uh, kind of like a, an artillery shell. And I was running into problems in that, well, if the small warhead stays attached to the, um, the, the structural fuselage behind it, like during flight, if it impacts while still connected to something... Um, because of the way the warhead functions, more than likely, it's going to act like the structural fuselage, meaning it's not going to explode, it's just going to disintegrate. And I've been trying to figure out a way around that. And the way I figured was, um, you'll see over here in the first stage, I've actually got a couple of stack separators. One is, of course, in the base that uh, separates when the, rocket, when the rockets fire, and then you'll have another one immediately behind the warhead. Now the reason why I have the small uh, warhead so much smaller than the surrounding structure is so that way when it fires, uh, the rocket's acceleration will keep the warhead snugly within the confines of structural fuselage and keep it uh, aerodynamically more or less stable. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the space plane hangar as target practice because it's a nice big, it's a nice big target. Yep. Pop the brakes. Okay, seed shield, seed shield is dropped. Go ahead and give that thing. It's got just a, just enough. Um, I think it's just enough. It's got just enough uh, angle to hit the space plane hangar for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fire it. You'll see that because the warhead separates from the main body of the shell. But it's still kept within, still kept aerodynamically stable, uh, basically uh, by the cuff that the structural, uh, the structural piece provides. It still stays in normal flight. Now that stops as soon as the separatron's exhaust, because the structural fuselage has such a high drag. So um, it basically gives this thing effectively about a 500 meter. Uh, range, but that's still uh, for a short-range artillery piece like what goes on the Vindicator. That's perfect. So what I'm gonna do is uh, once I get this thing uploaded, I'm gonna go ahead and include the uh, mortar shell as well. So if y'all want to build kind of like your own uh, artillery pieces uh, within Kerbal Space Program, you know, more or less stock, you know, with the addition of you know, tweak scale and the warhead, then you can do that. So hopefully, if you guys are trying to use a small warhead and you're running into this problem. Just make sure you separate it before whatever it impacts, and uh, you should be fine. So thank you all very much for watching, and uh, I will see you all when I get the Vindicator uploaded.